Welcome to Quilt 101. Today we're going to be talking about binding, which is the outer edge of the quilt, and it's very important to learn this. So today's lesson is on binding, which is a crucial part to quilting. Every quilt has a binding. Um, so we're going to take this cute little Simply Charmed quilt today and we are going to attach the binding. So let's go through the different steps of what it takes. First, you um, typically use anywhere from two to two and a half inch strips. We, I personally like to use two and a half inch strips because I like a little bit more binding showing on my quilt because I love the pop of color on the edge. Some people like it thinner and they'll use like a two inch strip. Um, but I would say on average two and a half inches is about right. So um, there is a way to calculate it. Um, in your quilt kits that we provide, the binding is already cut for you so you don't need to worry about it. Um, and then the yardage is on the pattern if you um, are just going to cut the fabric yourself. So um, when you've got your two and a half inch strips, the first thing that you need to do is attach them. And now this fabric, there's a definite wrong and a right side. Sometimes when you're working with solid fabrics, um, there's even a right and wrong side to solid fabrics. So what I would do if you have solids is so you can tell where the fold was. So the fold is the right side. So on this step, I would iron everything in half first so that you remember what is the right side of solid fabric. When it's a print, it's pretty obvious what's the right and wrong, so it's not that big of a deal. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a mitered edge when you join them. So you're basically just putting these perpendicular to each other. Um, if you want to put a pin in it, you can. Um, after you do a couple, you'll see that you won't need to. So then you're going to go to your sewing machine and you're going to sew from corner to corner. Now I am using a darker thread so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Hold on there. Ooh. Glasses. So you're just going to sew directly from the one corner on the top to the corner on the bottom. You just kind of line it up and it just sews. Now I'm just doing two strips for demonstration right now, but you would have more strips than this. You would just take the next strip and do the same thing, just right sides together and stitch from corner to corner. And then you're going to want to, um, to trim it. So you simply come up. Then you're going to trim it about a quarter of an inch away. Don't need the scraps. So you're creating a strip like this. And then you're going to come to the ironing board. And I just iron these open. Oop, the iron's backwards. Oop, and it turned off. Hold on a minute. All right. Move this down. So these you're just going to simply fold in half and press. So we are just going to come along here and we are just going to press the whole, the whole strip. You just kind of keep going. All right. I'm actually going to pause here. All right. So now you can see I've got a long continuous strip of binding. So 
what I I typically machine bind mine so I will sew it to the back and then I'll bring it to the front and I'll mach machine stitch it down some people um, a lot of people like to do hand stitch the binding so for that you would actually sew it to the front flip it to the back and then with a needle and thread you would sew it down but my demonstration is for machine binding so we start on the back of the quilt uh, let me just I always like to start either on the side or the bottom is my preference so you're just gonna leave like maybe um, I don't know maybe like a six inch tail about like that and you don't really need to to pin this down if you want to you can go around the whole quilt and pin it down um, but I don't it's it's pretty easy once you get to the machine let me just move this stuff out of the way all right so you want to attach it using um, a quarter inch so I actually have my quarter inch foot on there so that makes it easy and we are just going to start on the edge and the corners is what's the most important so that's what I want you guys to see is how to do a corner so let me just start it up here we'll get to a corner here in just a minute um, and another little tip on sewing the binding is you kind of want to give it a, a slight tug, just a little bit. Sometimes if, it, if it's too loose, it doesn't lay as flat when you flip it over. So if you kind of give it a little tug, so I kind of tighten this and I tighten this. And then I hold it together and then I sew it. That's just what I found. If it's just a little bit tighter, it works much better when you flip it over. All right. So we're getting close to the corner. So what you need to do when you get to the corner is you need to stop about a quarter of an inch away from the corner. So you just kind of go slow and you stop about quarter of an inch. Needle stays down and you rotate the quilt. All right, so after it's rotated, you're actually going to pop your needle up. So you pop up your needle and you just pull it out maybe two or three inches. So you've got your binding tail over here. So you're actually going to flip the binding up And I don't know if you hope you leak, you can see this, but the edge is even with the edge of the quilt. So when you flip it up, just make sure the tail's edge is, just goes right in line with the quilt. So then you flip it back down and you want that to stay even with the edge of your quilt. So they're both lined up on the side and it creates a little bit of a fold that's right at the top of your quilt. So you're going to hold that down with your finger. You're going to slide it back under the machine and just start at the top edge. And you just sew your quarter inch. All right, and then you're just going to keep sewing around all the corners. And I'm going to do the side real quick and show you it one more time. So remember, we're pulling this a little bit tight and the quilt, and we hold it together and do another 10 to 12 inches. And you'll kind of see in here when it starts to get loose again. So you want to stop, tighten it a little bit, tighten the quilt, hold them together, and then just keep sewing. All right, so we're coming to the next corner and I just want to show it to you once more. 
So you go to a quarter of an inch from the corner. You want to stop, remember, about a quarter of an inch. You're going to rotate the quilt. You're going to pop the needle up and your machine should have a button that raises the needle or just move your, your presser foot and raise it up. You're going to fold up the binding so the edge is even with the quilt edge. You're going to fold it back down so the binding is still even with the edge of the quilt. And the top fold is about at the edge of the top of the quilt. So you push it back under and you start sewing at a quarter of an inch. And you just keep going down. So you're going to do that to all, all corners of your quilt. And then we'll meet back up and I'll show you how to do the finishing. Okay, so we're coming to the end where the other strip is. So this is a technique that um, a friend showed me that I like. So you go within, oh, maybe a four or five, five inch gap between the two and you stop and you are going to kind of go in the middle of that five inches and you are just going to butt these ends up to each other. Can you see how they meet right there? You're going to take a pin and you're going to pin it right there. Okay, do you guys see that? So you butt these two ends up together. Let me show you again. You bring that this way and the other one this way and where they come together right there and you're going to kind of hold it tight. You put a little pin right there where it pins both layers together, like that, okay? You want to cut your thread and pull it out of the machine. Now you are going to sew where those pins were. So you kind of have to maneuver the quilt just a little bit. All right. And you're going to Kind of take your pin out, but remember where you were and make sure those line up really well. You're just going to bring it back to the machine and you are going to, you do a little bit of back stitch just to seal that in pretty good and you just sew it straight down. See, just like that. Just sew it straight down. And then I usually just whoop, lay it back down just to make sure it looks like it matches. And it does. It's a little bit loose. Can you see where it's just a puckers up just a little bit, but it will still be fine. So at this point, you are going to trim it. So just go like maybe, I don't know, quarter to a half an inch above it. And you're going to trim it off. And what I like to do, you can either just iron it like this and keep it open. But I like to dog ear these little strips down. See that little, I don't know if you can see that little tiny dog ear right there. So I kind of do that and press it with my finger a little bit. And then I do the same thing to the other side and just kind of give it a good little press with my finger to hold it in place. Now normally you wouldn't have such a dark thread, it would be more of a matching thread. Um, so this thread is really sticking out right now. But So now you're going to flip your quilt over and we're going to stitch it to the top. So we are going to flip this over. Oh, ha! Huh, wait a minute. Sorry people, I didn't sew it yet. Got to sew it. Alrighty. So it's a tiny bit loose, so I'm just going to kind of overlap it just a little bit. And it'll be fine at the end. All 
All right. Now we can flip it. Okay, so now we're just going to flip everything over to the front. All right, let's get this going here. Okay, you'll be able to feel with your fingers where the seam is. You can, there's just a little, you'll, you'll know what I mean when you feel it. So you're just going to get under there and you're just going to start sewing. So what I like to do Get that little thread out of there. Inside my presser foot, I like to line it up so that it, it runs along the edge of the inside of the foot and the stitching goes just barely past. And I'll show you, let me stitch a little bit here and I'll show you. All these little dog ears, if you take it to the iron and give it a little iron, that will hold it, I'll hold it down. I was hoping they would cooperate so I didn't have to take that step, but here we go. All right. Now I also use about a three and a half thread length because I like it to be just a little bit longer. And then we're just going to start Sewing down here right on the edge. To keep it consistent, you just want to make sure that you're lining it up on the inside. So you kind of do about six inches and then you line it back up. And you just keep on going. You'll notice, you'll see on the back, you have a, the line of stitching from where you sewed, the, sewed it to the backing. And then the other, um, well actually that's the, the line from the front. So that's about, that's about where it is. And you just keep going. Let me just show you a corner. All right, so you're gonna kinda keep going till you get to the edge of the, to the edge. When you're about, oh, I don't know, about this far away, you're going to flip the corner. So you can see where it just creates a little mitered look there, and that's what you want. And I usually get like a little seam ripper or something to hold that down so I don't sew my finger. Now actually, I still have my quarter inch foot on there. That doesn't really work for this step right here. I need to trade that out and I will. But you just kind of take a little needle and you work it in there. And I usually just give it one little back stitch to hold it in place. Now remember, your thread will be more matching than this. So I don't really care for this dark thread, but it's only just so you guys can see it. And then we're just going to continue down. So that's how you do machine binding. And when we get, um, I'll just kind of sew for a little bit. When I get to the end, I'll, we'll join in again. So I'm coming to the end, so I'm just going to show you one more corner. And I just wanted to point out too, um, I switched my sewing feet, and if you can tell this one is um, more flat and open. This one is that quarter inch, and it has this little, the, the hard piece that comes down to keep it at a quarter of an inch. And that was just pushing the binding too much and making it gap a little bit. So, as you can see, I switched the feet, and it's sewing much smoother now. Um, then just to remind you, you're about this far from the edge. It's about what you want. 
And um, thread stitch, I usually go about three and a half. I think it gives it a, a nice look without doing a lot of pulling with a smaller stitch. All right, so I'm just gonna show you one more corner. So we're coming down to the end. You wanna just kind of flatten that out so it creates that little diagonal and you're gonna flip it. And then take your little tool. Um, I use a seam ripper, but any kind of a little flat tool will work. Kind of hold it down in place and just push it in there. Now I typically, I do a lot of baby quilts. And so one reason why I like machine binding is because it holds the binding down really securely for lots of washings with little children. Um, and then I will typically do one back stitch right at this point, just one. Except my machine likes to do two, sorry about that. And then I'll just continue down. Now remember too, you usually have a matching thread. So the stitches aren't so pronounced like mine are right now. Matching thread hides any imperfections. So we're almost joining up here. So when you get close, I just kind of hold the other end so it kind of flattens it out a little bit like that and then you just kind of kind of work it in a little bit with your fingers and you just join right in do a couple little back stitches and there you go so with that you have your quilt all bound up and ready to give to somebody special so we hope you liked that version of Tutorial. Have a great day. Bye-bye.